Okay, here we go with some hints for homework sheet number eight. Okay, the first question, you have to transform the graph, in other words, you have to move it. You know that the plus two in the bracket means the graph's got to go left two, and then the negative four at the end would then mean down four. So take the picture that you've got and do that transformation. For question two, this time we've got a log graph. You know that the log graph normally has this line here as an asymptote. But, however, it's been moved across to here. So the number that has been moved across is what you're going to substitute in here. And it's kind of obvious what that is. Also, you're told in the question that you've got this point along here, which is at 8, 1. So we're going to substitute the number 1 in for the y-coordinate and we're going to substitute the number 8 in for the x-coordinate. So we're going to have 1 equals log to the base a of 8 take away whatever you found the b value to be. And then you just solve that little equation. It should be easy to solve because with this answer being 1, we are trying to get these two numbers here the same. For question 3, we've got to draw this graph. Okay, now by this time you will have learned that pi upon 3 is just a fancy way of writing down 60 degrees. So it's a cost graph that's been moved 60 degrees that way. So the best way to think about this is to say, well, what did my cost graph originally look like? So a cost graph would originally look like that. And then all you've got to do is move everything across by 60 degrees. And then draw your new graph. Okay. What you do need to find though is what's this point? What's this point? What's this point? And what's this point? Question 3 is just that in reverse, basically. We know it is y equals a sine bx. Now, this number here is how long it takes to do one wave, which is 90 degrees. So the answer which is going to go in here for b is how many of these waves you get in 360. Next number you've got to worry about is the number at the front. And the easy way to work that out is to look at these two numbers and what's halfway between them. Not halfway between them, sorry. Look at these two numbers and what's half the distance between them. So between 4 and negative 6 is a distance of 10. Half of that tells you the number here. Question 5. Nice wee simple f of g of x question. Okay, we need to put the g formula into the f or we need to put the 4x in here. Question 6. We need to find the inverse function. So how do we do that? Well, we start off by saying let the first thing we had was y equals 4x squared minus 6 and then do a little bit of work and change that to x equals. Okay, how are you going to do that? We're going to take the negative 6 over, then we're going to take the 4 over, and then we're going to deal with the square root. Remember, your answer needs to be written in terms of x. Question 7. A wee bit more complicated. Okay, we've got to go from corner A to corner F. So in our diagram, here is corner A, here is corner F. So the question is how are you going to get there? Now I'm going to suggest the best way to get there would be to go along the top and then down the side. Okay, so if I knew the vector along the top and then add the vector down the side, then that would be my answer. So looking at the picture, the vector along the top 
is vector A to B. And then my vector down the side is B to F. You might think that's not helping, but remember, this vector along the top is the same as this vector along the top, the same as this vector along the bottom, the same as this vector along the side. And we know in the question, because it tells us what H to G is. So we know in the question what this vector is. It's the vector A0,0. So we just need that to add to vector BF, this one down here. Now that one is the same as that one, which is the same as that one, which is the same as that one. And again, in the question, we are actually told what the vector d to h is. Right, we are actually told this one. So get that one, put it in here, add them together to get your answer. Question 8. Prove that they're collinear. So we're going to work out a to b. Doing little b minus little a. We're going to work out b to c. By doing little c minus b, we're going to get both of these answers and there's going to be a connection between them. Remember your sentence and that connection is your ratio. Okay, check last week's. Question 9. Find a point that splits 2 and the ratio 1 to 5. The easiest way to do these is to set it out like I've done and then do like a cross multiplying idea. So you do 5 times negative 2 and then you add on 1 times 4 and then you divide by 6. Okay, let me go through that again. So the 5 here multiplies the negative 2, the 1 here multiplies the 4 and then you divide it all by 1 added to 5, you divide it by 6. And then you repeat that for the next set of points. So the next set of points would be 5 times 4, 1 times negative 8, divided by 6. And then for the third set of points, 5 times 1, 1 times negative 25, Oh, I think I find it's actually 25. I think I've made a wee mistake there. So it's 1 times 25. Add them together and divide by 6. And that will give you the three coordinates for the missing point. Question 9. The longest question that we'll have to do. Find the, the angle theta. So we need to work out first of all MAL. Then we need to work out MAN. We can do that easily, and then we're going to use a formula which says cos theta is ml dot mn divided by the length of these vectors. Okay, so get your two answers. Okay, the top is the first one times the first one, the second one times the second, the third times the third added together. That tells you what the new top number is. A bit of Pythagoras on each one to work out the length and then calculate theta. Check your jotters guys, you've got two or three examples like that in there. Second last question, just what we've been doing in class. 5 to the power x equals 20. Can't solve that as it is. You can't solve when x is a power. So what's the best way to do that? Is to take the log of each side. Once you've taken the log of each side, that little x will jump down the front and then you can take the log 5 over. Second one, log to the base 3 of 2x minus 1 equals 2. Okay, what we want to do with this question is we actually want to get rid of that log. How do you get rid of the log? We do to the power. Okay, so if the log disappears, you're left with 2x minus 1, and then to the power, what goes to the power? The little base number. 
remember it goes over to this side and it grows. And as it grows, it pushes the two up. Right, there's an easy equation to solve now. And the very last question, simplify that. First thing we need to do is get the two up here. So it's the opposite of what we normally do with these things. So get the two up the top, and then we know our rule where it says if we are adding logs, which we're doing in this case, we can simplify that by making it log to the base 5, and it's the first one times the second one. Okay, hope it helps.